The other big uh, item in, in the loss of tooth structure right now is erosion. And erosion, by definition, from the dictionary, okay? But there's another definition to it also that is basically caused by non-bacterial non action. And they also, I mean, in this they say erosion is sharply defined wedge-shaped depressions. Now they've thrown that in and confused with abrasion and attrition. But if you think about erosion, really what we're talking about is not erosion but corrosion. Because erosion is caused by the force of water. So the Grand Canyon, okay? The river. Taking the garden hose and cutting a little prop through, through the dirt. That's erosion. Force of water is eroding away the surface. And none of us are drinking water that fast to create the leach. What we're actually seeing is this degradation caused by a corrosive element. And that, by definition, is actually corrosion. Now, we're not going to see the word corrosion pop into the literature because there's just way too many articles that we call it dental erosion. And no, there's just not going to be enough of a, of a push to change it. But this is actually the, the proper term, dental corrosion, because it, we, we're talking about basically what's happening. So, a lot of good stuff in this area too. It's become quite popular in the last few years because we're seeing a lot of it, and we're seeing a lot of it because of what we're drinking nowadays, right? So enjoy your diet folks. Um, think about your patients. How many how many soft drinks are consumed nowadays? How little water is consumed? If you drink one thing, you don't drink something else. So if you drink soda, you don't drink water. If you do drink water, you use bottled water, which usually has no fluoride. Right? So you drink non fluoridated water to supplement what you don't drink in acid. Okay? So, soft drinks. The pH value of soft drinks, I'll show you in just a bit. Pretty nasty stuff. How much do people drink? Well, they drink three to four times as much as they did 30 years ago. 30, 35 ounces a day on average. 20% of children under the age of two are drinking at least a cup of soda a day. You ever go to the shopping mall? Up at the bed. You see kids in strollers sucking on a can. But the parents don't worry because they're giving them diet soda, right? I'm not sure, but they don't want to wire if they're sucking on sodas. So there's so much of it being consumed. Slowly, you start to see the breakdown. You probably started seeing been in practice um, long enough, you've probably started seeing at some point in your practice, your young patient was coming in with sort of decalcified teeth. I didn't see it for a long time. I don't have a lot of young patients. I'm not a good, a good expert on, on you know, the demographics of, of, of the valley, but I started seeing patients coming in for single tooth implants. They had lots of white spots here and there, just a breakdown. Then I wasn't seeing 10 years ago. So it's, it's, it's a big issue. Um, all kinds of stuff. Glass, glass chlorinated, sweet water, bleaching away the teeth. I had a patient who was a, a competition swimmer who um, wore dentures. And uh, she came in, this was 15, 18 years ago. She came in and she wanted to get some new dentures. And she took them out. And they were just refrigerator white, except for the dentures. But the pink base had become pure white. And so the teeth looked really brown. And they were like A2s. But they just completely bleached out. And she said, she swimming every day, hours a day. So, I mean, there's you know, studies, wine, you know, wine swishers, people who do wine tasting. Swish is good, swish is good. Acid, 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 acid. So, there's a lot of studies in different areas. One of the problems we're facing now is that we have abrasive toothpaste and we have softened teeth. So, should you brush after every meal? Okay. You grow up with that. Should you? Maybe. When? How soon after you eat you should you brush? It takes a couple of minutes for enamel to soften under acid. 
but it takes about 30 minutes for it to remineralize. So if you're if you're having lunch and you're drinking a little soda with your lunch and you run into the brush your teeth before you see your patients, probably the worst possible time to brush your teeth. Because you've softened them with the acid and now you're scrubbing them. Deadly combination to the teeth, you start to wear away. Your abrasion and erosion combined in the allergy. So for me, in my patients, if I see anybody who has abrasion at all or, or a hint of erosion, I tell them you have water with everything you do. You want orange juice in the morning, you have orange juice and a glass of water with it. Sip, sip. Food, water. You want to have wine, wine with water. What do you do when you go to a restaurant? Doesn't matter what you drink, there's water there. You go to breakfast, they have water and your orange juice. That's what I tell them they have to live their life that way. Don't run and brush. Rinse, swish, get rid of the acid. Wash them out, neutralize as fast as you can. That's your best chance. Because if it sits, it erodes. So, just a, a little look at, uh, at what, what we're drinking, and, and thank you for the topics I had my share. Of. I've got some more there. Uh, well, here's water, our pH of seven. Right, so we know we all we all know that. And here's battery acid with our pH of, of one. Okay. And right down there is Pepsi next to the battery acid, and 2.49. Okay. And we've got a few other things thrown in here. Um, Pepsi, I don't worry so much about. I don't worry so much about Coke because they have calories. They're evil. <laughs> so people think I'm not going to be drinking Cokes all day long. I'll drink that. I have Pepsi. And that's what happens. The other thing that happens with diet sodas is they don't get sugary. They don't get syrupy as they sit. So they get a little warm. Big deal. It's on your desk. So amongst our, our, our people in the, in the, the living cubicles, you know, they've got the diet coke all day long. Sip, 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 sip. Right. This is what happens. These things are just eating away teeth. Sport drinks, Gatorade, three. Well, besides having a lot of calories, they're highly acidic and frankly should be used for sports. Right? Because the only way you lose electrolytes is actually to use them up. So you don't really need to drink the Gatorade. Um, these are a bit of an issue because there's a couple different acids there, right? You've got citric acid thrown in there with plus four. And uh, pretty nasty stuff. So it, by and large, the soft drink that, that scores the best in terms of the least problems is root beer. Something like the oldest, right? Go back to the old stuff. Has a release of water. That's kind of scary. That's scary. This is um, another form of erosion. <coughs> this is the, uh, the bulimic patient. This is the pathognomonic lesion. This severe wearing away, eroding away, corroding away of the linguals of the maxillary anteriors is pretty much exclusive to the bulimic patient. Here's another example. These patients are at greater risk, not only from <coughs> acid, but most polemics are also pretty careful about going in and brushing. Good. Foul tanks. There's also a great, great, great focus on the image, the outer image. Right? The brushing the teeth very, very careful. Meticulous hygiene. So they're scrubbing soft teeth. So it rose away. But you also tend to see abrasion lesions in some areas too. All right, so good literature again on, uh, on the bulimic patient and a lot of good citations. 